Namaste beautiful yogis. Hopefully outside here where I am the sound is okay. I am again coming on trying to show up a little more on this channel because I may eventually transfer to this channel. We'll see. But I'm coming on to answer one of your questions on one of you sent me um, um, reach out for support and i wanted to do um, a talk video because those things i think with typing a lot is lost especially i'm not very good at typing on the phone so i feel like i cannot express uh, myself well uh, in in that form in typing messages anyways i will include the message in the video i'll edit it in uh, and um, it's basically, I'm going to summarize it, uh, it's someone that after they went through breakup, they're suffering with binge eating and although they feel like they know why they're doing it, there is no, uh, it's a vicious cycle and they can't stop doing it. So there's no question really, it's more of, it's, it's more of, um, um, I guess wondering how to get out of that cycle or um, reaching within maybe for uh, help help within by reaching without anyways so I wanted to talk about it I think that we all go through cycles of depression and sadness and we all react in in certain ways usually unhealthy during those periods especially when we're younger and we don't have the tools tools we tend to develop tools over the years of how to know ourselves better and find ways around, uh, find ways to deal with those things that our crutch is the way we know we typically will go about things. Um, I think there is a practical solution to this situation and there is also an emotional um, outlook on things. The emotional outlook is always stepping outside of ourselves and remembering that all these situations are temporary that everything that matters to us is going to remain in our life in one way or another in one shape or another this or after this life love is never lost so if we feel that we've lost something that is a temporary loss especially when we lose parents or uh, soulmates we don't lose them that is a perception that we have at the moment and nothing is lost in the um, eternity of things in the eternal um, uh, when we realize that everything is eternal and the things that matter uh, are always coming in cycles or being in our life in one shape or another in one energetic vibrational shape or another so that's one perspective to look at, at things from another is that things really do change and we're gonna get old real fast and we're gonna forget a lot of the things that troubled us when we were young and they won't matter and oftentimes with eating disorders the thing is we're trying to control part of the situation because we feel out of control or we feel that life is scary so again, stepping outside of the situation, out of the moment and realizing that this whole particular segment of life will pass, will end, and we're going to be on our deathbed soon. And all of those things won't matter. Um, the losses, the shortcomings, uh, the failures, mm, the resentments, the grudges, um, even the successes, the ambitions, none of this will matter but the peace in our heart and how connected we are to God will matter I usually don't talk about God in those terms I understand it as the divine and often refer to it as the divine but however you want to call it we have to really nourish that connection which is usually within ourselves. I usually can tap into that feeling of divinity in the quiet moments in nature or even when I just and by myself usually nature really really sparks up that feeling but it is within us at all times within our own self because we are part of nature we are nature ourselves as far as on a practical level binging is simply that restriction and then the body wants what it wants so 
on a practical level you can really help binging by just eating enough and ultimately you lose weight from that rather than gain eating a lot would lead to losing weight but consistently and there is one thing i haven't done it although i did as a teenager I also did binging meaning that's if if i ever had any if i ever had imbalance would be eating too much uh, at times in life when i'm depressed and because food is medication it makes you uh, not feel when you eat a little too much you're full and you don't feel a lot right it's kind of like numbing the rest of your feelings so it is a form of medication but the way to stop it is to just eat and it's easier said than done of course when uh, someone is going through troubles and pain and um, heartache but look into something that came across my um, um, on my radar basically a year ago or so I've never really done it because I have really found a healing lifestyle for myself naturally through yoga and adoring food I think when you start eating high quality food and appreciating where food comes from you develop this deep appreciation and gratitude for food so it doesn't become a source of anxiety it becomes this thing that fills your heart with gratitude because we are provided this um, amazing beautiful uh, food generously from nature and it makes me so appreciative of it that of course it's a healing it's a healing tool to just look at food in that regard when especially you connect to where food comes from and quality food um, but something to look I'm really taking many words to say this something to look into is the set point theory um, it is um, um, something that is used uh, for healing from anorexia or any type of uh, eating disorder and as I mentioned I haven't done it but what I've done is I eat so that's the premise behind it so you're going to um, find books maybe facilities if you're really uh, if you actually have anorexia of course find a facility or s uh, massive support depends how bad the situation is if uh, you are someone that's on a recovery uh, journey anyways and you have the wisdom to support your own self and the strength then you can do it yourself as well but uh, find a, a uh, find the books and the videos and the support that uh, explains I think I'm gonna have to come back because of the AC but find the books that explain the set point theory okay I'm so I'm back and I'm whispering because everybody is sleeping but I'm awake and I'm just sitting drinking coffee and looking at the sea and just enjoying the early morning hours so uh, back to um, what I was saying, I hope the sound is okay, um, the set point theory, really look into the set point theory because to me it makes perfect sense as far as healing goes because what happens is through a cycle of restriction and cutting calories down, the body wants what it wants, it's real noisy, I don't know if, it will, uh, if the sound will work here. Uh, but through cycle of restriction and constantly trying to to eat less and look a certain way, um, we uh, we mess with our metabolism, of course, and we damage the metabolism temporarily. It's all fixable, and uh, it creates because the body wants a certain amount of calories uh, every single day. It creates a cycle of binging because you have to catch up. Um, uh, for the missing calories plus the mental aspect of always feeling that you're starving as far as um, improving your digestion that could be triggering for some of you but there is things that I have had to do in order to have really good digestion it's really noisy 
uh, and one of them was intermittent fasting. There has to be a period in which you, you do have to have empty stomach and get hungry in order for your food to actually taste good and for you to really, really build up strong digestive juices. The preparing the apartments for new, for new people probably. Um, that, that's that's a lady that uh, has uh, has family in Los Angeles, so we're talking about it, uh, and she's helping her with the maintenance of this place. Uh, hopefully, this sound will work. But set point theory basically is I'll, I'll just summarize it. I'm not an expert on it. I'm just uh, kind of sharing and opening you up to it in case you've never heard of it. Set point, set point theory is basically you're gonna eat until satiation for as long as you need to and at first if you if you feel coming from um, anorexia which is a long period of restriction you are going to probably eat a lot of calories and natural amount for a long time and slowly that will taper off because you're never gonna restrict you're not gonna over exercise just a little bit to maintain muscles but not to burn calories a little bit to feel good, to stretch maybe, uh, but nothing, nothing intense and uh, uh, not, nothing of the mentality of anorexia where you're doing stuff to be skinny. And I don't know, uh, that could be completely off subject for the person I'm responding to, but I'm just kind of eating disorders, anorexia, um, uh, losing weight, uh, that whole thing. Uh, putting it in one video so that we open up that conversation. We all have suffered with some forms of uh, anxiety and um, um, restricting about food because we live in a time when food is far too available, far too low quality, we far too high in calories because it's far too processed and we have all eaten processed bad food and that's basically not good for our body we can get far too many calories mess up our hormones uh, easily easy calories and we naturally could be sedentary because again life the lifestyle is not ideal nowadays uh, so we all have fallen in certain cycles uh, through our especially teenage years I'm sure and because uh, in my teenage years I myself was not active at all I was sitting all day studying and not knowing what to eat so uh, I did not feel healthy back then and I had to transition and it's been a long transition for me because now I'm 40 and that was when I was 16 it's been years of transitioning developing a healthy relationship with myself healing um, fulfilling my needs in a healthy way and all of that uh, searching and looking for balance and one thing is that through my early 20s, I felt like achieving balance, achieving discipline are so important and now I always tend to meditate on the next 20 years, so I'm meditating on my 60 year old self and I'm realizing that being disciplined, first of all I achieved it when I stopped striving, now I feel like I'm more productive than I ever was able to for my personality type because I'm not a disciplined routine oriented person I'm just a person that flows and that can be challenging in our world where productivity is very highly re regarded but then I am realizing that none of those things will matter over time it will not be of utter importance how productive I was it will matter how much I felt God or felt the divine or felt that inner spark, inner connection to divinity, to the universe, to a higher consciousness. That is what ultimately going to matter. Yeah, being productive helps with the journey and less suffering because ultimately we are more in tune with uh, the external side of life. But again, as I'm saying, don't value yourself on on the things that society tends us to make us feel are important because ultimately they're not. I'm meditating on my 60 year old self and I'm realizing I don't care how productive I am. If I sit all day and if I just relax and if I just look at the sea, that's that's fine and somehow the universe finds ways to take care of you and I have been very also focused on work for a certain amount of time so uh, productivity of course comes in cycles but we don't need to forget what truly really matters in the world and get all focused on productivity and 
making it in this world, which is the focus of a 20-year-old. Because you come into this world and you, you have all this anxiety to make something out of yourself. But ultimately it won't matter. What would matter is your consciousness. When you die, you take only your consciousness with you. And if you have risen your consciousness, then somehow that would reflect in your life work. And it would also raise the consciousness of humanity just by raising the collective. So that would be your highest value to society, not how much you produced physically. Physically it would come also, I think, because for me it has come as a side effect of working internally. And I'm off subject, but probably not, because a lot of our anxieties are probably stemming from that, from trying to become someone, which is the first part of life. And then the second part would be trying to undo that, trying to undo the ego, developing a strong ego, and doing the strong ego so we can die peacefully and let go uh, with ease so we can move on. I'm losing my voice <clears throat> because I'm trying to talk far too quietly and there is so much noise. So, All right, this is just a meditation and things I've been thinking about. I, I remember when I was 20, I was already 27. I started feeling old and feeling like I'm 40. So now that I'm 40, I'm already meditating on 60 so I'm always kind of a little ahead of myself but that's I guess how my mind works and I'm starting to see how much I don't care about anything anymore or the things that are valued in society are so meaningless and even though I don't care doesn't mean I won't do it I'll still do it but I'm not attached to it or I don't place an immense value on it I don't feel like that's defining for me it's just something that you do as a part of your uh, journey, your path, and back to the set point theory so I can finish this video. This is just a, kind of like a hanging out, drinking my chicory coffee with you meditation type of video. Um, made this beautiful chicory coffee with rose hips and barley. Uh, it's uh, uh, all the Russian stores here have the best chicory coffee so look in the Russian stores anywhere you're at and <clears throat> sorry about my voice so the set point theory you're just going to eat a long for a long time it could be depends on how long you're um, binge eating or uh, anorexia has been going on if it's been going on for uh, two three years then your recovery will be proportional to that if you've had it for one year if you've had it for 15 years so the set point theory you will gain some weight on the way to recovery because you're gonna fill up your bones and endocrine system and everything with the nutrients that you're lacking and also mentally it would be liberating the only thing that you have to get used to it is the weight gain, but also the vision that it will come off when when you've leveled your system. The only thing I would say is not all of them talk about whole foods because they don't want any type of restriction since a lot of the people are coming from restrictive behavior. Of course, I would recommend whole foods because processed foods are not part of our... Um, they have not been natural to our biology so they would naturally throw us off and I think part of a lot of the anorexia and eating disorders are that that we are bombarded with unnatural foods and on some level we understand it we feel it and we start to restrict so say whole foods mostly plant foods I'm changing my opinion about veganism lately just by observing things and I think that if people were 95 percent vegan to 99 that will be ideal for society, meaning some exceptions can actually make some people healthier or make it possible. And that would be very good for the earth, nonetheless. Um, anyways, that's on a different subject, a whole different video that I have to make at a different time. But that was to answer this question about uh, just binge eating. Binge eating for me has always, because I have had it, it's always been if I don't, uh, if I'm not mindful of my uh, calories, if I don't eat enough calories, I'm getting a call. If I don't get enough calories one day, the next day I would compensate. I'll come back. So if one day I don't 
get enough calories the next day I would compensate so there is a little bit of value to tracking how much you eat not 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 tracking tracking like not obsessively but knowing that you ate especially if you train especially in in general a lot of people are not aware of calories so one day they would be busy they would eat something uh, that has volume but no calories and um, or they would just not notice they, they've eaten little and the next day of course the body would want you to eat a lot to compensate for that so binging is that cycle of restriction and binging where set point theory comes you can i think if you're not in a really really bad place you don't have to full-on go to set point you can just start eating a normal diet and make sure to eat every day and that would prevent you from binge eating that's what i've done through the years i just make sure to eat a lot and I've never gone through that set point theory where people eat eight to 10,000 calories for months before it tapers off and they start tapering off. But that's with strong eating disorders that has to be done because if there is strong restriction, there has to be strong overcompensation. Mm, so you find your place you can just start eating or you can go full on for the set point theory and heal yourself that way that's the physical aspect of it i think this all stems from emotional issues anxiety uncertainty about life sadness loss and all of that and oftentimes we have to face our sadness so that we know that we're okay with who we are how we are and acceptance I think when I was younger, and maybe that's true for a certain percentage of you, when I was younger I just beat myself down so much for not not being as productive as I'm not an ambitious person, I'm naturally a person that kind of flows, so I beat myself down for not being as productive, as uh, successful, achieving as other members of society but that was because I was driven to different things and I fell into doing those things properly in my own way uh, with time and acceptance and self-forgiveness and just just understanding that how you are is okay you don't have to compare yourself to others you have your own path your own gift to humanity your own gift to yourself or your family and you don't have to be a particular type of person some people are a, per, a type personalities uh, some people um, on different rating systems of uh, psychological rating systems some people are um, manifestors generators some people are projectors and we all have a different way of how we should be in the world and understanding that accepting that and telling yourself it's okay you don't have to do anything, produce anything. You don't have to be an artist or whatever. Things will come easier from that space of acceptance. Um, I think I blubbered enough. I'll, I won't edit it. I'll just post it and the AC turned on. So love you all. You have my support. Thank you for messaging me and asking me uh, for support. It's an honor. I don't know if I can help, but at least I can send you my love. Namaste.